Hello everyone, Karnasa here, and once again I'm just going to do another little quick forward. So, in this episode, everything that I said I was going to do, I am going to do, however, I did forget to record the game audio, so you're just going to hear me talking. Not that that's, well, not the worst thing in the world, I guess, if you follow me on this channel, I guess you don't mind that, but yeah. Anyway, this is going to be the Artemis LLP, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Hello everyone, Kanasa here, and welcome back to another build episode of Kerbal Gets Real. This is going to be the second build episode we're going to be doing, and today I'm going to be working on, well, quite an important milestone for our space agency. We are going to be landing on the moon. We're going to send a unmanned probe, and we're going to try and land it on the moon. So, this thing is going to be called the Artemis, Artemis, if it lets me type, there we go, Artemis LL. I think yeah Artemis LLP standing for Artemis Lunar Lander Probe cool there we go we can we can't save that yet because we've got not got anything out so let's crack on with this build so of course we're going to need some avionics as our core stage because we need to be able to control this thing we're going to set this thing to deep space because obviously we're going over to the moon so we're going to need those deep space avionics once you get past geostationary orbit height I think that's when you need to switch from near earth to deep space well, we're going to get a communitron on there because we're going to need to be able to talk to this thing. Let's have a look. Transmit power. I'm going to go, I'm going to go for 40 and then we get, if we look around 400, we get around 2, 2.0 kilobits per second. So yeah, that should be fine to transmit all the science that this thing is undoubtedly going to get. Talking of science, let's go in, configure the experiments and see what we want. Now we don't want a uh, orbital per perturbation <laughs> we don't want orbital perturbation because that situations is only space low and high and we are going to be landed we don't want infrared radiometer early tv camera will be nice i think we're gonna go for a magnometer magnetometer even and a mass spectrometer in this is this is weird i don't know why it does that so i'm gonna have to come out of that and then we're gonna have to go in and configure experiments again right and what was it mass spectrometer I believe is the last thing that I want to put in here. There we go, that's looking lovely. Cool, that's all done. We're going to put an RTG on here because we need power. The power is always nice. Let's actually put the RTG there and then we'll put the communitron on top. And obviously that looks a little bit silly at the moment, but we're gonna, we're gonna use the inset tool to basically make it look a bit nicer. Right, what else do we need? We need some more scientific experiments. We need a thermometer and a barometer on this thing because that is also biome specific. So we're gonna want to have those on here. Well, actually it doesn't matter if anything's biome specific at the moment, because this is going to be the first time we land on the moon. So we can use anything at the moment and we'll get all of the science that we could possibly get. Right, there we go. Let's just inset them a little bit and then we'll get this RTG and we'll plop it down there. The reason why I'm using RTGs at the moment is because they provide a fairly decent amount of power and I don't actually really have any good solar panels at the moment. I kind of rushed the RTG build, but there we go. That's, that's all that done. Now, what do we want to do? We want to have, we want to be able to control this thing. So let's but how big are they? How big are the next ones up? I mean, they do look rather big, but I'm going to be using hydrazine thrusters to you to do the final descent of this probe. So I kind of want some fairly large ones just so we've got as much control as possible. Let's put some hydrazine, change the configuration to hydrazine. Then we're going to go in and we're going to get a separate structure tank. We're going to change it to the best tank that we can possibly do, get the utilization up. I think I want the diameter to be a bit smaller, maybe eight, maybe length of four. That looks like it could be promising. Okay, right. And we are going to get rid of the flag on that eventually. Let's get rid of that now, actually, before I forget. Toggle flag visibility. Let's get some legs on. Change it to 45 degrees. I'm going to make these legs slightly smaller. I think we'll go, go for 50. And then let's grab those and let's put them on there. And then see, actually, that, that looks like it will do do us for now. Cool, sweet. And then I'm going to go get the all-important thruster. And I think we're going to need more than one of these because I don't think one is going to be enough. Now, this thing isn't going to, this stage isn't going to do the entire descent. I'm going to have like a two-stage descent. And basically, I'm going to use the engine that circularizes at the moon to do part of the descent as well. So hopefully <laughs> it won't break and 
or anything like that because it does have a fairly high ignition failure rate chance. I'll get to that when I get to that though. Okay, feet pressure too low. Really? Hydrazine. There we go. How much specific? How much delta V does that give us? That gives us 662, but that's probably, we can probably upgrade that because, yeah, look, we've got so much electric charge in here. So I'm going to get rid of all of that electric charge. We only need, really need, well, we only really need one because that RTG will be providing enough power forever. This won't, it will constantly be producing power. Well, like 30 years or something, I think. Yeah, it lasts a really long time. Okay, so... That gives us 862 meters per second of delta V and a burn time of 502. That, quite frankly, is a little bit silly because, <laughs> well, we would undoubtedly end up crashing into the surface of the moon. Why wouldn't it let me select that if we did something like that? Okay, so we're going to get another four. So we have five all in perfect symmetry. And that brings our burn time down to 100 seconds. That is looking a little bit nicer. Obviously, we lose some delta V because of the added weight. But I think... That should be our lander. I'm going to just put these up a little bit more because I don't really want... Yeah, I think I want a bit more room for those legs. Cool. Right, so I think, yeah, that, that will be our lander. I don't think I've forgotten anything. We've got power. We need to... It's deep space configuration already. Let's actually... I want this to maybe... The control mass of this to be about a tonne and a half. So we've got down to 642 meters per second of delta V and we only weigh half a ton. That's really nice. That's looking rather promising. Cool. So I'm just going to give this a very quick paint job. Let's go in and all of my probes end up looking the same at the moment. There we go. We've got a nice shiny golden tank at the bottom there. And then I'm going to make this shinier because I love all the sparkly shiny things and I think it makes it look really pretty. Okay. But that's just a purely aesthetical point of view. And I'm going to add some lights as well because... If we end up being on, well, the dark side of the moon, not not the kind of far side of the moon, like the actual dark side of the moon, where, where the sun isn't, obviously, we want to actually be able to see where we've landed. That would be nice. Hopefully that won't be, a, be an issue, though. But we'll have to see. And I think I'm going to make these lights a little bit red. Yeah, that... That looks, that looks nice. We'll go for that. We'll go for that. Okay, let's just put those in a little bit. I love the inset tool. The inset tool is amazing. Right. So, I think that looks good for that stage. I think, yep, yeah, I'm going to turn the lights off because otherwise they're going to get really annoying. Yeah, I think that's 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 perfect. That that works. That's exactly what we want it to be. Now we're going to have to make a payload adapter ring. Let's make sure our symmetry is down to one, so we don't keep getting right. Come on, this is this is. I'm I'm not going to use one of those. I'm I'm going to use one of these. It might be easier to see which which engine i've actually got this placed on oh come on let me get that middle one please this carried on for another 30 seconds with me actually still being unable to place that on like that you know what i might do i might just pull this down and then i'll pull that back up there we go <laughs> there is a solution to everything and the solution was to use the inset tool once again okay right but i want this to kind of be even so let's get down and do something like that there we go much better those those rcs thrusters are looking particularly large on that stage but like i said we these engines have no gimbal whatsoever so we're going to need these to control our attitude at all times oh hello no i didn't want to didn't want to do that please go back to zero there we go i'm going to use fairing auto shape on it in a second anyway right let's get this down to 1.5 1.5 yep that looks that looks promising and then we're going to get another another tank once again high pressure diameter back up to 1.5 length let's have it a bit longer variant cryo again then i'm going to use this juno 4 6k upstage engine now this has three ignitions which is really nice really nice and it's got quite a decent isp in vacuum yeah there we go 300 vacuum isp so I like using this and it's a little bit smaller than the AJ-10 mid. So yeah, it's just something I like to use. I think, I don't know when that was added, but when I first started playing RS, S and RP, RP, RO and RP1, it wasn't there. Okay, right. Let's get ourselves a little mount. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose that works. 
that works perfectly. Okay, sweet. And we're going to put hydrazine and NTO in there. That's another reason why I like using this engine, because at the moment, that fuel configuration is hydrazine and NTO. Obviously, hydrazine is what we're going to be using for our RCS thrusters. So that's really nice. We don't have to add extra tanks for that. Okay, what weight are we on? Three and a half. That's a little bit too much. But we can kill some of this utilization because we do not need three 3,000 delta V. We probably need about 2,200 on this stage, I reckon. 800 for circularizing at the moon. And then I think to land on the moon, it's about 2,000 meters per second. It might be a little bit less, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to err on the side of caution and go for maybe like 2,000 or 2,100. I think that should do it. So that's what 2,800 in total, 2,900 in total. So that should be enough. Yeah, 800 for circularizing and then 2,100 for landing. Cool, that's brilliant. How much does that weigh? Two tons. So we are going to need to increase that. And we also, obviously, for this stage as well, we are going to want some control just to ullage our engine and do all of that nice stuff that we need RCS for. There we go. Engine, change it once again to hydrazine. And like I said, it's really nice that this engine burns hydrazine because then we can just use these and not have any extra tanks, which is really, really nice. Okay, right. Now, what do I want to do? So we are now at 2.04 tons. So can I get this up to two tons without resizing it? I can. So let's get it up to 2.1, 618 meters per second. I think that should be okay. What weight are we on? 2.05, right, okay. Get some of these on. Now it looks like a giant egg. Sweet. Now, now actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and recolor it quickly. Sweet. Now that looks very much like a spacecraft that I've designed before. Well, designed a lot before. I'm gonna put that up there, and then I think we'll keep the flag for this one. Sweet. Artemis LLP. We're gonna save that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go and test this and make sure that this thing lands. And this is a great thing about Crash. So what we can do is we can go in and we can click Orbit Selection and any celestial body that you have flown past, you can select to orbit it. So obviously we flew past Venus in 1959. We orbited Venus in 1959. We've been around the sun because we had to go around the sun to get to Venus. And we've obviously been around the moon and we've orbited the moon. So what we can do is we can actually select an orbit. And I'm going to set this at 60,000 meters because that's roughly whereabouts I want to be. Now, unfortunately for this, actually, before I do this, what I might do is I'm going to get rid of some of this. So I reckon, let's have a look, 2,171. So I, I want to be on about 1,300, 1,400. That, that would do. Okay, so... That is gonna be more accurate of how much Delta V I'm going to have left after I have achieved this orbit. So let's see if we can land this thing when we're orbiting at around 60,000 meters. But yeah, I will start the simulation up and I will see you when we're orbiting the moon. Well, Crash seems to have messed up a little bit. I have absolutely no control over this thing. It doesn't recognize it's anything. So because of that, I'm just going to have to hope that this thing works. So yeah, I'm going to have to hope that this thing works. Okay, right, let's go back to the VAB. Well, that was a bit annoying. What I think I might have to do is I might have to test the entire mission, but I'm not going to show that in this episode because that would make this episode last really long. Okay, so now that we've got that all sorted, I should probably actually check and make sure that my staging is all right. Right, yep, that engine goes at the same time as that RCS. Then we want those to pop off at the same time as that. And then we want to use all of these and we want to use the RCS. So we only need two stages. Cool. Right now we need to build the lunar transfer stage because this thing obviously is what's going to orbit the moon. So let's get another payload adapter ring. And God, I'm really not having much luck with placing these at the moment. There we go. That's much better. Okay. And we're going to make this size two meters and then I went and I bought integral tanks, which I haven't actually been using yet. I've been using separate structure tanks, but I want these because I want the MLI layers. And that's going to be something very important because we are going to be using Hydrolox engines. We are going to be using the RL10 because that thing has absolutely fantastic specific impulse in vacuum. Let's have a look. 
I think. Yep, yeah, there we go. 422. That's, well, quite frankly, a lot better than anything that I've got. And it should be able to do this quite, quite comfortably, quite comfortably. Right, there we go. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a mount as well, just to, you know, look, look all pretty and nice and how I want it to look. I like, I like my rockets looking nice. I'm, I'm doing the wrong thing. There we go. That, that, that works, I think. And then we'll get that on there. So lunar transfer stage, we need about 3,150 meters per second. We are, I have forgotten, we do need to place an avionics unit in there as well because that avionics unit on the core up there is just for this stage. So we do need some more avionics. Okay, right, let's make that diameter the same. I'm going to make this thing deep space as well. And there is a reason for this. I have a feeling that we, well, this, the RL-10 has 10 ignitions and I have a feeling we may be able to use one of its ignitions when we get to the moon to kind of help this stage out a little bit. That might be quite nice. So we'll see if we can do that. And obviously I'm going to be launching this thing on the Heracles 60 VII point B, <laughs> the 7.5 that I built in 59. So we've got up to seven and a half tons to play with which will be nice, and I'm fairly sure, right, so we're on 6.3 tonnes at the moment. Let's have a look. Not quite there. We are not quite there. We need a little bit more. Just a little bit. Have I got this? Yep, its utilisation is as high as it will be. So let's get that up to a little bit more. Let's try and go for a four metre tank. That's 254 seconds. So there we go. We've got 3,366 metres per second of delta V. That is more than enough. However, that will probably go down when we add our hydrazine, although it might go up when we take away all of this electric charge. And let's do that now. And I'm going to put, put 500 on. There we go. Yeah, yeah, look, we've almost got 3,600 meters per second now. That is absolutely glorious. Okay, right now we're going to add some tanks. I want the radial tanks. This is going to contain our hydrazine, which will power our ICS, ICS RCS thrusters that are going to be on this thing. Okay, we want that to be high pressure. Let's get that diameter down a bit. I don't think we need quite that much. And then let's just inset them in a little bit. This is basically a centaur stage, isn't it? RL10 engine. Cool, right, let's get some bigger RCS thrusters because we are going to need to ullage this stage and we are going to need to turn this stage. There we go. Sweet. Right. Anything else? Anything else that I need to do? And we've, well, we need to put the hydrazine in there. Are these configured to hydrazine? Yes. I think 3,261. What are we weighing? 7.5 tons. Right, let's make these a little bit smaller. 7.3 tons. Right, that's looking a little bit better. I think, I think that might do us. I think that might do us. Let's get that density down because we don't need that. Is that still, yep, yeah, we need to get that density down as well. There we go. Now, of course, it's paint time. So let's go in, make this black. Cool. Right. So 3,453 meters per second of delta V on that stage. We only need 3,150. So that's going to give us an extra 300 when we get to the moon to circularize, which will help this stage, which will help this stage. We are way below seven and a half tons. So this, this should do the trick. This should work successfully if all of my calculations are correct and I haven't done something completely wrong. I think we are good. I, I do think we are good. So now what we need to do is do the all important part of going and selecting our subassembly. And of course I did mention about using subassemblies in the last build episode. They are so good. Look, I can have a look here and it says 7.5 tons LEO LV, low earth orbit launch vehicle. So all I need to do is go in and drag this, pull it out, attach it to my rocket. And you can just do that. And I've labeled them all so that I know how much tonnage they can actually get to low earth orbit. And it just really, really helps. Now I'm not gonna use that payload fairing that we had on there. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to make this bit here the top payload fairing because <laughs> that would be 
an incredibly long and an incredibly large payload fairing. So what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to get an in-stage ring and we're going to get the height down to as low as possible. How big is this? I think that tank is two and a half meters. So we want the base to be two and a half. We want the top to be two to match that. Then we'll get some extra height in. We'll get conic recolor in. And then we just match it up, match it up. There we go. That looks like it's going to fit rather nicely. Let's go down a little bit. Yeah, I think that works. That Yeah, that, that, that looks like it is going to be do the job and it's going to be absolutely wonderful right okay let's get make this black give it the old orange strip that we are using at the moment cool there we go and then we just attach the avionics on like that and there we have it i as far as i'm aware i have not missed anything let's just go through obviously we've got to check our staging and make sure everything is in all working order so first stage we're going to fire those engines and those engines the lr105s and the lr89s cool then we're going to detach those clamps. Excellent. Then we're going to detach the booster stage. Excellent. That is not correct. We do not want there. that there. Next, we want this to fire and we want this to detach. So where are we? That. Yep, that's perfect. That and that. Yep, that's all good. No, we do not want you there. And yeah, there we go. That hopefully should have fixed it. One other thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to go in here and... Obviously, I'm going to add some separation motors to deorbit our core stage, which I haven't done yet. So let's go and get these separation motors small, and we'll place six of those on there. Perfect. And then we'll come on. Let me grab you, please. Please. There we go. Sweet. Cool. And actually, do we reduce the density of this? No, we didn't. So there. Okay. Now, now that we've got those six new separation motors, we need to figure out where they go. They are going to go there right so that stage goes and fires all of those that looks good then our lunar transfer stage so we're going to get rid of the core stage of the rocket we're going to fire up those rcs we are going to we're going to yep detach that fire up the rl10 engine and then next stage being get that get that get that we need to get rid of that as well open that up and then the final stage yeah no i think that all looks good so once again make sure we're going to save that and i think that is ready to well at least be tested so yeah that was the construction of the artemis llp the artemis lunar lander probe and that is that is the end of this build episode now one thing that i did notice when i went and actually tested this thing so once again always test your rockets i didn't actually update the avionics on that centaur well rl10 transfer stage so uh yeah i went and put those in so nobody panic about that it is it has been done so yes we can actually use this rocket to transfer because i launched this thing got to the point where I was going to transfer to the moon and then I couldn't because I didn't have any attitude control at all. So remember, always test everything and just make sure that everything works as it should. But anyway, if you have enjoyed this episode, why not give it a like? If you have really enjoyed this episode and would like to continue with the content on my channel, please do feel free to subscribe as well. I have been Karnasa and I will see you later.